Hey, I'm Courtney Waterman, your tutor. Lover of anime, manga, and math. And you just tuned into another session of Tutor Me Senpai. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're jumping into a 10th grade topic, finding missing sides using the Pythagorean Theorem. If you're new to my channel, I'll be putting time codes in for this video in the description box below, so be sure to check that out and skip ahead to whatever part of the video you think is most interesting. As I always say, if you have any questions about what you see here today, or even your own homework, you can put them in the comment box below, or you can visit me on my Facebook page, at Tutumi Senpai, and tell me all about it there. When you find this video helpful, remember to leave a like. It really helps get these videos that I've been making to other people who may need the help as well. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit the notification bell, smash the subscribe button, and share this video with a friend. But without further ado, let's talk a little bit more about the Pythagorean Theorem. So far in this channel, I've talked about other things like Sokotoa and the Law of Signs, but now we're going to be jumping into the Pythagorean Theorem. And I made mention of the Pythagorean Theorem in my last video on the Law of Signs on pretty much when you can use it compared to the Law of Signs. And if you recall, in general, there was one thing that separated when to use the Law of Signs compared to something like Sokotoa and the Pythagorean Theorem. And if you hadn't seen my video on either Sokotoa or the Law of Signs, I'll be putting them up top, so feel free to click those and check those out at any point in time. But getting back to the Pythagorean Theorem, there's still one real question about when to use it, and that is when you have a right triangle. If you have a right triangle, something that looks like this, that is going to be pretty much your indication that you can potentially use the Pythagorean Theorem. Unlike the Law of Sines like we talked about in my last video, you can't use the Law of Sines for a right triangle, but you can use Pythagorean Theorem to find missing sides on a right triangle. And if you have a right triangle, it is normally denoted by this little box in the corner here, which is a visual representation that this is a right triangle. Now you might run into other triangles that don't have that box, don't worry. If it is truly a right triangle, if the instructions say these are right triangles, you know that you can use the Pythagorean Theorem. However, there is something else that you need for the Pythagorean Theorem to actually work. And that is, not only do you need a right triangle, you need at least two sides of the right triangle to find the missing side. If you only have one side, so let's say you have side A and side B, and you need to find what this is. So A and B are numbers. Let's say A is three and B is, let's say six, right? You need to find what that missing side is. That is perfectly fine. But let's say you weren't given B in this case, right? So B is unknown. This is something you can't really use the Pythagorean Theorem for because you need at least two sides in order to find a missing side. You can't find two missing sides with only one bit of information. And you'll see a little bit more about that when we talk about what is the Pythagorean Theorem, like what is the formula. But when you use it is when you have a right triangle, you need to first have a right triangle, and you need to have two sides of that right triangle. And that's going to be all you need to find that missing side. Actually, there is one more case that you can use the Pythagorean Theorem, but we'll leave that for a bonus at the end of this video, so be sure to stay tuned. Now, what is the Pythagorean Theorem? Well, we talked about using it when we have a right triangle, and we also said we need at least two sides, but why do we need two sides? What is this formula? Well, the Pythagorean Theorem tells us that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That is the formula for Pythagorean Theorem, but what is A, B, and C, and why are we squaring them? So A and B are going to be what we call legs. So let's say A and B are here, and remember this is a right triangle, so it's going to be denoted by this little box here. Not necessary, but it's a visual representation that this is a right triangle. You have to have a right triangle for this. So A and B are legs. Legs are the two sides of a right triangle that are not the hypotenuse. So we talked about the hypotenuse in other videos, remember the hypotenuse is always going to be opposite your right angle. It is the longest side of your triangle. Hypotenuse, longest side. So this right here is your hypotenuse. The other two sides are called the legs. So if you know your hypotenuse is, your legs are the other two sides. And A and B are just going to be labels for your legs. It doesn't really matter which one gets what. So A could be here, A could be here. It doesn't really matter as long as you're keeping up with which leg you're assigning A to and which leg you're assigning B to. So if A and B are going to be your legs, 
C is going to denote the hypotenuse. And that's typically how it is. A and B can move around because they can be either leg, but C, as the longest side of the triangle, has to be on the other side of this equal sign. So C is going to be your longest side hypotenuse. So what the Pythagorean theorem tells us is, if we're giving this leg here and we square it, and we add it to the square of this leg here, that's going to result in the value of our hypotenuse squared. So C, in this case, squared. So how does this help us find our missing sides? We're talking about squares, but none of our sides are actually squared. Well, imagine you don't have, let's say, the hypotenuse, but you do have the two legs, A and B. Well, A and B are numbers. They're gonna be actual numbers. So we're gonna just simply square them and add them together. So that's gonna result in some number. It doesn't really matter what it is, some number, and that number is going to equal C squared. But now that you know that C squared equals some number, you can use your square root in order to find out what C is, right? So if you square root both sides, so it's gonna be the square root of this number equals the square root of C squared. But what happens when you do the square root of C squared? Well, something funny happens and your square goes away. You're just left with C, which is the missing side. And here is the value of C now. You had a number equals C squared, but now you have the square root of that number equals C. Now, I know you may be thinking, whenever you do the square root of both sides, you're actually left with a positive and a negative version of that number. However, for this case, you can ignore the negative because we can't have negative sides. There is no such thing as a negative length when you're dealing with these triangles. So when we square root both sides in this case, you can just stick with the positive. So that's why I automatically made this positive. Instead of making it plus or negative, it's always gonna be positive because we're dealing with actual sides. You can do this the other way as well. You don't always have to solve for the hypotenuse. You can solve for any of the missing pieces. So let's say we're missing a leg here, missing B. We don't know what B is. You can simply square the hypotenuse, subtract the leg that you do have, and that's gonna give you the leg square that you don't have. And when you square root both of those things, well, you're left with B, your missing side, your missing leg in this case. So we talked about when to use it and what it is. Let's get some practice. Let's see how we're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem to find our missing side. So we have a triangle here, and you can see just from our visual representation, this is a right triangle based on that box here. So we know that we can use the Pythagorean theorem at least because it's a right triangle. Now notice we also have two sides. So we definitely know that we're safe to use the Pythagorean theorem because we can use those two sides to find the other side that's missing. Remember our formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which a and b are gonna be the legs, c is your hypotenuse. So the first thing I want us to do is label this. Let's figure out where our legs are and where hypotenuse is. And the easiest way to do that is to first identify what is your hypotenuse. Remember, that's going to be the longest side and it's always opposite your right angle. So if this is your right angle, opposite of that right angle is your hypotenuse. So this is going to be C. And we already said that it doesn't matter where your A and B go, just make sure you're consistent. Whatever you choose for A, it's A for the entire problem. Whatever you choose for B, it's B for the entire problem. So I'm gonna put A up here and B over here. So our A is our X in this case, and our B is our 24, and our C is our 30. So this question is really just telling us to find the missing leg A. So let's plug things in and see how things fall. So we have X squared plus this B squared, which is 24 squared, is going to equal this 30 squared. So we have a 30 squared there. We have X squared plus 24 squared is going to give us 576, and what's 30 squared? Well, that's gonna give us 900. So now we're just gonna subtract 576 from both sides to get x squared by itself. So I'm gonna shift this over here to give us more space. We're gonna have x squared equals 900 minus 576, which results in 324. So we know that x squared equals 324, but we don't want x squared. We want to find x. x what does that equal is going to be our answer. So we can't stop here. So we square root both sides. So the square root of x squared is going to be the square root of 324. And what's the square root of 324? Well, you can put that in your calculator and you'll find out that that is going to be 18. So x, in this case, 
is 18. So now that we know that our answer is 18, we can just do like a mental check just to make sure that things make sense at a glance. However, when we look at the actual triangle, it looks like it doesn't because this leg is so much longer than this one. However, we got a shorter value. Don't worry about that. We don't necessarily care about the drawing size itself, but we do care about the drawing position. We realize we found a leg and not the hypotenuse. What that means is our leg can't be bigger as far as value goes than the hypotenuse value that they gave us. And in this case, it's not. So we know that this triangle still makes sense. However, if this was something like 31 or more, this would show us that we did something horribly wrong and we had to redo our math. Our leg can't be more than hypotenuse, so because it's not, this triangle still makes sense. The drawing just doesn't. So I promised you a bonus scenario in which you can use the Pythagorean theorem without necessarily having a right triangle. And this situation is just that. Let's say you're given a triangle that you know all the sides. So in this case, we know all the sides, three, four, and five but we don't know if it is a right triangle. Although it looks like one, it doesn't have our visual representation of what a right triangle will have. It doesn't have that box anywhere inside that triangle. Well, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to help us identify this triangle as either being a right triangle or not being a right triangle. There's our secondary scenario in which you can identify these triangles now. So let's plug it into our Pythagorean theorem, and if it works, we know we have a right triangle. If it doesn't work, we know that we don't have a right triangle because the Pythagorean theorem is always going to work for right triangles. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And remember, although we don't know where our hypotenuse is, the hypotenuse is supposed to be the longest side of the triangle, so we can assume that this would be our hypotenuse. So we're going to say, a in this case is going to be 3, and B in this case is going to be 4. It doesn't really matter, but make sure your, your 5 is your C in this case. And we're going to square these, and now we have our Pythagorean theorem. So 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and our 5 squared is 25. And when we add these two together, we get 25 equals 25. Well, that checks out, right? So we know that this is actually a right triangle, although it didn't have our visual representation. But this doesn't have to be the case. You might find situations in which your triangle is not a right triangle. It might be really close to having a right angle, maybe like 89.5 degrees, but it's not quite the 90 degrees. And now we know that this is indeed a right triangle, so we can put our representation there. Just like our hypotenuse is going to be opposite our right angle, our right angle is going to be opposite our hypotenuse, so we know exactly where the right angle is as well. So that's how you can use the Pythagorean theorem to identify whether a triangle is right or it's not right. So I hope you have been following along to these examples, and I hope that you see that Pythagorean theorem can be used to not just find your missing sides, but also to identify whether your triangle is even a right triangle or not. If anything you saw today confused you in any way, make sure you put it in the comment box below and I'd love to be able to help you as much as I possibly can. If you have questions about your own homework let's see on this channel, remember you can visit me on Facebook at Tunami Senpai and tell me all about it there. If you haven't done so already, remember to leave a like. It really helps get this channel to many other people who can potentially use the help like you. And before you leave, don't forget to hit the notification bell, smash the subscribe button, and share this video with a friend. Well, that's all the time I have for today. I'm really hoping this helped with your homework and I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. I'm Courtney, and this is another session of Tutor Me Senpai.